Hello everybody, so this is the first lure making, lure building video what I made it, you know, so hope it's not gonna be judge a lot, but this was a request some of my friends who was uh, using some of my lures who I made and uh, who I, which I made it and uh, they said, okay, could you, could you do some video and at least show us how you, how you're doing them and what sort of process get involved in that, so I try my best, you know. Uh, the first step, well, basically the blank is ready, as you can see it, and the first step I pre-drill holes for uh, pile holes, basically for screw-wise. And, uh, you know, I take it time and take it slowly. Uh, center sort of eyeballed, and uh, first I do a small couple of short drills, and I make sure it goes in the center, so the first hole I'm pretty happy with that one. Then uh, I'm following that three times, you know, the next one goes in the back, and again I do the quick short pre-deals, make sure I'm uh, in the right spot and then uh, double check before I do the final drilling, you know, and uh, drill. But I don't drill till end of it, I leave a small space for a uh, screw to screw in afterwards. So the next step is um, I would uh, put all my blanks all together and just make sure uh, the all they are lined up in one one dot, you know, because you know when you make a you know a couple of lures in a, like a three, four, five, you would like to make sure they're all matching, you know, quite similar terms of uh, size, weight, and uh, you know the location of the screw wise. And finally, you know, I will just uh, check do I'm really. Uh, got in the right spot, you know, and uh, do the, you know, because at the end of the day, the, all the senses are usually eyeball. So after that drilling be done, uh, the next step is I get a screw that's in place. So I use a various size screw wise, you know, usually buy them from eBay, AliExpress, you know, usual places, you know, no secret from that one. The front ones are gonna use a slightly bigger. In terms of diameter of the screw is the same size that the all them, but uh, the actual the eye where you're gonna put your trace in or line, uh, it's slightly bigger. Just reason for it, just to it's make it easier to attach your, you know. So they can see it close up. That's how they look. Yeah, pretty much straightforward. You know, mix up a five minutes epoxy. For the epoxy, you're gonna use this uh, Zap epoxy. In my personal opinion, is one of the best epoxies what you can currently buy in a in a market and reasonably cheap to be fair the how much you get for money will pay you actually get a decent amount of epoxy and this is gonna for me particularly gonna last for a long time thoroughly you know mixing up make sure it's proper mixed up you know uh, and uh, if you have a heating fan you can heat up as well i didn't heat up in this scenario but you know i sometimes do it and that's helped to settle in better then just basically pull it in and screw it into place and uh, make sure it's nice and tight and and uh, in the state you know I just try to line up in a horizontally you know that's where I, almost all three of them are done you know and that's the very last one go inside so that's again quite easy step forward you know pre little holes screw them in glue them in and uh, leave for a couple of minutes to uh, epoxy to settle in that's it After epoxy is uh, in place, I would uh, dip them in a C C A B. You know, that's a lure. I would I wouldn't class as a it's a lacquer basically. You know, and uh, you just drop inside the lure all the way through in and uh, make sure the wood uh, ta takes all the all the lacquer in uh, absorbs in the lure. Be a reason for it because uh, next step will be um, weighing. And the way I use, uh, I drop the lures in, in actually the blanks. I'm putting them in, uh, in the water to make sure they're gonna float in right. So I don't want any water absorbing into the lure. So this one is basically to protect the blank for absorbing any water. So the, so that's it. You know, they're there live for a, about an hour and it's ready to go. So it's this one cures very quick. The next step, as I said, you know, it's just putting uh, using these bullet weights, and I think they are used for this, uh, what you call them, Texas rigs. 
I don't use the textures myself, so but the bolt plates they work good for lures as well. So what I do, I just do very very simple thing: electrical tape, uh, attach the weight to the lure, put the hook sword in, and drop in water and see how it's gonna float. So they're gonna float now, but I know when I'm gonna drill eventually the weight in, uh, I'm gonna ex exceed take out more floatable material. So that's mean the lure actually gonna sink. So and I want to make a slow sinking because on a, the place where I'm majority of I'm, I'm fishing, uh, I like to fish in a shallow waters over the weeds and like to control the you know way how the lure sinks. So I'm making all my lures that I'm building, majority of my lures are making slow sinking lures or almost floating lures. So make sure the lure sits straight, you know, or if it's already going down, just make sure it goes straight so it doesn't go head down or tail down. And that's that that simple this. Next one I mark up the where is the weights was sitting. So make the make the dot uh, marking with a using a pencil. And then just to make sure again, small pile hole, make sure it's in the center, and just drill in. Very, very basic and simple. I think anybody can do that at home. You know, just push weight in. And again, drill. So you can see that I put a little bit of this the same electrical tape on the drill as well. Just mark it so I wouldn't go too deep. Uh, the thing is, you know, that you want to wait in bottom part of your, your belly part with lure. So like, like that. Next one I will drop a bit of super glue. Make sure it's in the place and uh, cure it in. And then I will use this modeling um, filler to cover it up. And that's it. And leave it for about I uh, over overnight. That's, that's already ready. See, that's how they look. So basically it's been uh, with a filler and it's been sanded off as well. They are they are ready basically for next step and the next step will be very straightforward. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do epoxy them using this, uh, what do you call them, the epoxy dyes. So the dye is, uh, for me, it's reason why I do this. Uh, first of all, the dye works for me as a background paint, so, you know, doesn't see the, the covering of the wood and covering of the weights. And the second thing, uh, it makes a lure much small, smoother, so the work surfaces on the painting is much, much so smoother. Very, very simple, so mix it up and goes on a drying wheel. And using a cheapest <laughs> paintbrush, what you can buy it because the chain brush, uh, paintbrush is a gross and waste afterwards. Uh, Simply just uh, put it on and that's it, you know. It takes about a couple of minutes to do it. The job is very, very easy, you know. But then I leave for uh, around eight hours on the, on the drying wheel to run it and cure it so it comes up uh, hard and uh, smooth. Because uh, afterwards, you know, it's going to make my painting job much, much easier, you know. I'm still going to use base paints, but uh, it's going to be easier as wouldn't have uh, any epoxy on it. There we go, and that's how it looks in the normal speed. That's how fast the drying wheel goes. And uh, speed, I believe, is a really important part of it. You know, uh, if it goes too fast, uh, I think the epoxy goes in uh, one corner or another side more. And if it goes too slow, you have a dripping as well. So the speed of the epoxy is ahead. So there you go, that's the ready one. You can see it's a little bit uh, weight through shining, but generally it's so using this white color, the spray it lightly quickly over, and then that's with the base color. And uh, I'm focusing more on the belly because the uh, white will stay in the belly. Next one is uh, this medium sort of egg yolk yellow, and that's I'm using on the sides. I'm just spraying all the sides, make sure it's well covered from the from the top to the sides. I, I would leave the belly part white. Next one is a uh, orange so I will starting from the top and just spraying slowly on the sides down all in orange so again but leave a slight line on the, on the bottom down so next one is green uh, brown and then uh, just spraying again uh, from the top down but again don't go too far leave a little bit of orange and yellow so it just matching this tones down and then very last one we're gonna use a uh, uh, what's called a pale brown, so the darker brown, and that will be more focused onto the back part. 
and uh, around the head and then later I will pay, uh, use this one for a gill plate, gill plate. There we go, very straightforward process, you know, takes actually quite quick, you know. And that's it, you know, that's how it looks. I'm quite happy with the standard. The next one is gill plate. So what I did, I made a small stencil and I will uh, first start with uh, spraying uh, yellow. That's what did the background color. Then jump on the brown one and I'm using this square edge, which is not really natural looking, but uh, I think it's just gonna look cool. So I got like a square, square shape gill plate and uh, then we focus all the darker brown we'll take that one off and you can see the straight way start making the right shape and now again spraying the darker one and just focusing our edge of the edge of the stencil don't go too far but basically because you're gonna lose the all this nice square cut and that's it you know nothing else i can say about this process just really straightforward uh, takes a lot of tension on spraying. It's a, it's a one, <laughs> one right, a wrong move when you, you're done. You know you you can start everything from zero. That's it. Spraying on, and uh, between that I will probably do some drying as well. But I guess first see it. I'm gonna peel off the stencil and see how it's gonna shape up. There we go. Yeah, if I would put closer to camera you would see a bit better but you know it is what it is so the next one is a as a brown trout it is the I'm gonna make a, a white dots and again made a very simple stencil uh, just paper stencil uh, put a dots on it and uh, use a small paper knife and cut the holes you know and uh, using a white the same white color what I use in the very beginning, just slowly, slowly spraying. You know, don't go too hard. You don't want any under sprays. So you're gonna go, you're gonna push too hard. It's gonna spray paint underneath the stencil. It's not gonna look so nice. But you know, that's it. You know, so spraying. And uh, this time I've done something different. I've never done it before. So I decided to do the red dots, all the dots actually. I decided to do with a painting brush. And I would, I don't know if it was the right thing to do. Uh, I'm sort of happy with the standard, uh, but maybe the airbrush would be better. Usually I would do it airbrush, just uh, take it time and slowly spraying a couple of red holes. And then uh, I can see that's the red ones. And now next one will do the black ones. And exactly the same step, use a painting brush on both sides, slowly painting away the white uh, bits and uh, just leaving an edge of around it white so it stands more out very straightforward process and actually you know painting brush I did enjoy it a bit more as an airbrush sort of way but airbrush probably would look a little bit better and then the same process on top uh, marking do dots I don't you know just don't repeat yourself and do the various sizes and various places, you know, I'm just talking through. And uh, as more uh, different sizes would be and as more random spots will be, as better it's actually going to look. Because it's, it's really hard to not repeat yourself. Because, you know, it's like a human nature just goes like, okay, and then I jump quickly on a stencil for uh, fins. Uh, cut out the stencil, glue it in uh, both sides so it's a... Uh, you know exactly the same location spray it uh, white and then I done a bit of uh, pink on the uh, bottom side on back side basically to make it a uh, bit more to stand out and then I just uh, use a small piece of paper and make this you know brown lines using the same uh, pale brown color what I used in the beginning I quite enjoy this process to be fair it's a uh, especially in the moment when you take off the stencil it's it makes such a big difference and that's it you know take a eye and glue it on and now the painting job and uh, all is done to be fair uh, the eye 
brings sort of a lure back on life, it's a, it makes a big difference. When you put an eye on it, it's like a boom, it's ready, you know. And there you go, that's how it looks. To be fair, I'm, I'm quite happy about it, you know. And I said, you know, maybe the dots by spraying would be look better, but oh well, that's how we do it. And there you go, it goes on the wheel. And uh, it's a five minutes, uh, five minutes once. No, it's just an epoxy. I use a true coat epoxy. I think it's really good epoxy. And what I like about it, it's uh, it's escaping all the bubbles. You don't need a lot of effort to heating and all the rest for escaping bubbles. They, they just pops out itself. And uh, it's drying up and it's, it's, quite, it's quite nice and it's a strong epoxy. So that's what I'm using. Sort of CV, CWC epoxy is very good as well. That's my second one row that I'm using. But uh, particular for this one was a true coat epoxy. Let's go on the wheel. So, lure is done. Let's see the action. This was the worst time, you know, spend. Oh, look. I believe that worked quite well. As you can see, the 